Hello man, welcome to Jewish Life, the show about people and issues in Judaism and some secrets you missed in Hebrew school. We've been introduced to the life of Sephardic Jewry, us in quotes, the Ashkenazic part of Jewry. We've been European, Western European, and we've basically focused on life that, uh, as we know it in the Ashkenazic communities, <coughs> German communities, French, and some of uh, Eastern European countries, Russia, Poland, and pretty much this is the side of Jewry that we have been involved in and participated. Lately, we have been exposing ourselves to the customs and the communities, which comprise, I believe, at least 50%. I know in Israel, it's more than 50% of the Jewish community. In Israel, happens to be from the Sephardic community. These are Jews from Middle Eastern countries, from Arab countries, from Africa, etc. So we are pleased to continue our series. We've learned about Yemen. We've learned about the general concepts of Sephardic Jewry. We learned about Spain. And now we are ready to move on to other countries, particularly the country of Iraq and other countries in the Middle East. I am pleased to have with me Dr. Heskel Haddad. He is an optologist in New York City. He is the president of the World Organization of Jews from Arab Countries. They are an organization who are here concerned about the welfare of Jews in Arab countries and about the wealth of Jews in Arab countries, as we will learn more from Dr. Haddad. Doctor, thank you for coming and welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, just as a preface, let me say Dr. Haddad is an author of a book called Flight from Babylon. It was uh, published by McGraw-Hill sometime in the beginning of the 90s. His life story of how he went from Iraq to the United States and what transpired in between. What is the World Organization of Jews from Arab countries? What is your main focus and what is your concern? It's an organization that um, uh, tries to bring attention to the world, especially to the Israeli government, I would say, about uh, not the plight of the Jews in Arab countries, but rather the rights of the Jews from Arab countries. Because people think that only the plight is important. Now there are not many Jews in the Arab countries. What is important now is that our rights are safeguarded. And we have, just to put things in the current perspective, everyone is concerned about the rights of the Palestinian people. In the negotiations, they are negotiating what Israel should give back in form of reparations. And Ashkenazic Jews, we quite frankly can talk about the fact that Germany has been making reparations to the Jews who suffered in the Holocaust. They had the uh, entire Poland and, and many countries in Europe were wiped out and their, uh, the uh, belongings of the Jews was confiscated and the German government officially is making reparations. What about, what are we talking about? Close to a million Jews? Three million. Three, three and million, and three and, and, and a half million. million Jews who lived in Arab countries prior to 1948. Right. Today, we can put together in all of Arab countries, what, less than 50,000? You know, th there are less than 20,000. Less than 20,000 in yeah. all Arab countries yeah. combined. Yeah, let's put it, put it very e exaggerating it. There are, there are uh, less than 7,000 in Morocco now. There, were, there used to be 350,000 in Morocco. There are less than 2,000 Jews in, in Tunisia. And there used to be 100,000. There are hardly no Jews in Libya, there are no Jews in Algeria. There were, uh, in, in Algeria there were, there were about 100,000 Jews in Algeria and in Libya there were over 100,000 Jews. In Egypt there used to be over 100,000 Jews, now there are less than 300 Jews. In Yemen there were 70,000 Jews, now there are, there are about 1,000 Jews, we're trying to get them out. In Syria there were about 70,000 Jews, now there are less than, less than 300. And in, in Lebanon, there are no Jews, maybe a few, few ten, in the tens in, in the Christian part of Lebanon, there used to be about 70,000 Jews. In Iraq, there were 150,000 Jews, now there are about 60, mostly over 70 years of age. We can, we can just go on and on. And no, these are basically the Arab countries, that, uh, that, uh, how many Jews there are. Now, you know... And it's not that these Jews one day decided to sell their property and uh, get a fair market value, took their money That's and they went to the uh, riches of Israel or, or other countries to resettle. 
That's what I like to emphasize to people that, that these Jews came penniless Jews to Israel. It was in, after 1948. The Arabs uh, designed to make life miserable for these Jews so that they will want to leave. And they, let, they forced them to leave and they confiscated all their properties. They confiscated billions and billions of dollars of, property, of, of money and property from these Jews. And uh, one day I was talking to a group of, uh, of uh, Americans and uh, somebody asked me a question, Isn't, didn't the Jews leave voluntarily out of Zionism? I said, there was Zionism, there was Zionist zeal among the Jews. But let me ask you, there were over 600 people sitting there in the audience, they said, how many of you Zionists would, because of Zionism, would you leave your home and your property and your assets and right. everything else and, and go with one suitcase and leave America and go to Israel? None of them raised, no, nobody raised his Not hand. Not even one. Not even one to raise his hand. I said, the Jews of Iraq and the Jews in the, the, the Arab world were not stupid. They were business people. They knew to live nicely. They were middle class people or rich people. The poverty among the Jews was, was, was less than 5%. So these Jews do not want to, to leave and go and be sec go to Israel and, and, have, and have no money and work as laborers. I mean, obviously, this was not a design by the Jews. This was designed to them by the Arab government. And this has culminated a process of persecution that started in the Second World War. In the Second World War, there were many, many Nazi uprisings in various Arab countries. In Egypt, there was one. President Sadat was involved with it. In Iraq, it was successful. They deposed, they deposed the king, the, the regent of the king, and they, were, they had a war against the British for two, for two months. In, Vichy, in, in Syria, there was Vichy government, and most of the Arab government, in, they had, they had pro-Nazi regimes or pro-Nazi uprisings. And in Iraq, there was a pogrom. Pro-Nazi pogrom in 1941, which we are going to celebrate in Shavuot. Uh, we, 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 celebrated, we celebrated in Shavuot because it happened in June 2nd, 19... Uh, 41. Over 900 Jews were killed and thousands and thousands of Jews were, 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 were injured and billions of dollars of property was, was looted and, and burned. And, 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 no, they, they, this is the, the people they did the that. People, and uh, so this is, this is part of the Holocaust. As 19, fact, 1941 was like what? 20 years after the State of Israel came into being? 1941 before the State of Israel. I, I, well, I just want to make sure that I'm not there was, confusing myself. There was myself. no State of Israel. That so time. the Arabs were persecuting not Zionists. Jews. They were persecuting Jews. As a matter of fact, they didn't know even the word Zionist to use to persecute Jews. 